I'm going to find the local and absolute extrema of this rational function. What makes this problem challenging is that the interval given is not a closed interval. The positive one is not included in the interval. I'm going to start as usual by taking the derivative, and I need to use the quotient rule to do this. I simplify the numerator, and I want you to notice that the numerator doesn't factor, but that's not really a big deal. Now I need critical points. I need points that are interior points of the domain where f prime is equal to zero or doesn't exist at all. Now my derivative is a rational function and so it's equal to zero when the numerator is zero. I can use the quadratic formula and I get two roots. The derivative does not exist when the denominator is equal to zero. That one's easier to solve. So I have these four candidates for critical points. Now I need to analyze this closely so I get out decimal approximations, 3.7 and 0.3, and I set up my number line for f prime. Now because the interval given was 0, 1, I get to ignore three of the four candidates. 3.7, 1, and negative 1 just don't count as critical points. There's only one critical point. So here my number line is complete. Now I need test values. I think I'm going to test 0.1 and 0.5. I'm going to test those values in f prime and find out whether derivative is positive or negative. Now here's a pro tip. When I test values, I look at the function f prime and I notice that the de denominator is always positive no matter what. It doesn't affect the sign of f prime. I simply ignore it. I completely ignore it. And I'm only looking at the numerator to find out if f prime is positive or negative. So I quickly find out that f prime of 0.1 is negative, f prime of 0.5 is positive, and so I decorate my number line with the minus and the plus. And as usual, this means that 2 minus radical 3 is going to be a local min. I can also tell right away that 0 is going to be a max. Now, um, imagine this with me. So f of 0 Look up at the very top, f of 0 is negative 2 over negative 1, or positive 2. So we're sitting at 0, comma 2, and then the function decreases. That makes 0 a local max. Finally, 1 is not a local max. This graph is going to be increasing towards that x equals 1 place, but it doesn't touch it. And if it's increasing the whole time, but then doesn't touch that end destination, then there is no highest height. So here are my results so far. One critical point, one local min, one local max. But what about those absolute extrema? Now this is really going to depend on whether f of 0 or f of 1 is higher. Here are two simple graphical examples to illustrate. Here, the dot is lower than the bubble. And that dot is not going to be an absolute max because there are parts of the other end that are higher, right? But there is no highest height because that tail ends in a bubble, so there is no global max. Here's the other possibility where the dot is higher than the bubble. You can see that the dot is the very highest height there is. And so yes, there's an absolute max. So what I need to do is figure out whether f of 0 or f of 1 is higher. Higher means use f, not f prime. f of 0 is equal to 2, but f of 1 does not exist. You divide by 0, and I'll be honest, I was not expecting that. So in a panic, I looked at f, and I realized that f has an asymptote at positive 1. This graph goes up forever as we approach positive 1, so of course there's no absolute max. We do have that absolute min, though, at 2 minus radical 3, and so this problem is complete. And in case you're curious, here is a graph of the function, which I kind of cribbed from Wolfram Alpha, I'll admit. And here you can see that the function starts at 0, 2. It decreases a little bit towards that global min, and then it shoots up towards that asymptote. And so we have a global min, one local max, no global max.